Established connection. <laughs> I was like, "What did you do?" I was like, "Fuck! I don't know what to do if this doesn't work." Um, okay, well, that's good. Well, uh, further ado, welcome to the 12th Morse Code by Vesa episode, uh, and I have amazing guests today: Kieran Levine, the wig master. Hey, hey, welcome. The wig master. welcome, welcome. Um, could you start? Could you uh, start by? telling everyone who are you what you do uh, and where are you more quoting from to us today say again sir can i can hear you <laughs> like i said like could we could we start uh you telling everyone who are you what you do and where are you more quoting to us today where or why where okay <laughs> i am kieran levine uh I mean, do you know it's funny because when people call me the wig, wig master, it wasn't it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like intentional. It's just something that happened, something that I enjoy doing. So when I hear that, it's like, oh, okay. Um, I mean, obviously you can see the back. I'm full of wigs, but like it's just still it's still weird how it's just happening. I guess naturally. Yeah. Uh, so so, but you are like like uh, story short. So you are a hairstylist known for session styling, photo shoots. Uh, uh, red carpets, celebrities, so and so, and you are also the celebrity editor of Overdue magazine, which actually yes. issue two is out right now. I know, I saw. I mean, I've I've seen like previews and whatnot, but I'm looking forward to sharing them with everyone because a lot of the hair shoots that kind of, especially the one that we did, I think it's amazing. Yeah. So, 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 guys, so guys, that. you are up for a treat. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> Hair story yeah. popping in in today. So you are uh, you are currently in London as well. I yes, so, I'm at I'm at home in my studio, um, which is the room next to my bedroom, <laughs> which is with all of your beautiful work. We can see. Yeah, the there you go. Amazing. Yeah, we're gonna go. Well, I'm definitely gonna dive into those later. Uh, cool. Are are you uh, isolating currently alone or with someone else? No, with my partner. Um, yeah, with my partner who, yeah, I mean, do you know what? It's actually not. It's actually not been that bad. The only thing that I, I, I miss, is work. Yeah. But well, I'm not one for going out. I'm not one for you know partying or whatnot. I I like staying at home. So <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect for me. <laughs> so, so that that's actually quite funny because my next question is like how. How has this like uh, crazy pandemic? How has it affected your day to day and especially your work life? Oh God! I mean, it's not. It's it's done more than affect. It's 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 halted everything. It feels like I, I've been saying this to everyone. It feels like twenty eight days later, where initially I was like, "Well, what's happening?" and it it didn't feel real. It didn't feel like it was something that like you know that that was happening in in today's uh, world. So it was it was weird. It took me about, I think, about three weeks for it to sink in. Yeah. Um, and then, and even then, because I, I didn't go shop, I didn't go to the shop for like a good four weeks. I didn't step out of the house for a good four weeks. So when I went to, when I went out, I said to I said to Ken, my partner, I said, "Why is everyone wearing masks?" Because <laughs> it, because I also I don't watch the news. Um, Ken tends to like summarize all the importance all the important things i should see because I don't, I don't like watching the news so i don't watch the news so when i went out and i saw people like distancing i was like it was still a shock after like four weeks later yeah it is yeah. it is it's crazy and especially now like because today it was announced that uh us here in the uk we we have reached we are the highest in mortality the highest yeah 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 europe which is is quite crazy what like obviously it's for you even because you have to work so closely with your clients mm -hmm. you know how how do you see this like like 
how how do you see yourself coming out of this now? Like because I think that the new normal of like us have to be like two meters apart. Mm -hmm. How have you thought about I mean, like, how, how that's you're going to do this? That's impossible because what we do is put hands on. I mean, it literally skin to skin, basically. So it's 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 a no go. So until everything is literally back to normal, which you know, as we all know, it's going to be a while. It's it's a no go. Yeah. Um, and you know, I I, I do I, I cut and color hair as well. Um, so I do have a lot of private clients. But the only thing is, yes, I can wear a mask. Yes, I can wear gloves. But I don't like wearing gloves. I don't, I can't work with gloves. It's weird. Even when I bleach hair, like I get I get uh, chemical burns because I don't wear gloves. Because okay. I don't like wear, I like to be like hands on. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it, make, it makes it very difficult. I think in some of the countries they've been saying that, oh, okay, the hairstylist, you can wear a mask, you don't have to wear gloves, but you have okay. to talk. No, <laughs> which I've... I think is going to be even more difficult. Yeah, because I'm a talker. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, a talker. Yeah, because, um, because I remember when I met you the first time, I, I walked into set and I was just like, who is this person? It's like with so many different wigs and extensions and all of this, like, like everybody, Kieran is the one that if there's, yeah. there's a <laughs> light in the party, it's him. You know, it's like the, the funnest days at work. Actually, like my last day of work before this craziness was I love it. with you. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. Aww. So, That's so obviously, like if you think there is no goal in, mm. in the sense of technicalities of working, what do you actually think about this, this new trend of working of, doing this type of like uh, live feed and telling the model to how to style their hair or you know what do you think about that hold on a second first of all is that a thing <laughs> yeah it is a thing so no I mean, way it actually happened that there's like big title magazines have already done photo shoots that photographer shoots through uh, through the, the, the video link and the makeup artist tells the, the model how to put the makeup the hairstyles, how the hair... What do you think about this concept? Just okay, now, so since, I, you, since you're the first time. <laughs> I have a saying. I understand the concept, but not the execution. Because it's... Yes, you can tell them the basics, but everyone has their final... Everyone has their, like, their, their final touch. Everyone has their thing of what, what differentiates them from other people. So, yes, you can do the bog standard basic stuff. But from when, from when you're doing the final touch, which makes you... Which makes you different from everyone else. It's impossible. It's impossible for the model to execute that as well. So I get why, but I I, I don't think it's going to be the same. I think you're just going to get a generic uh, style, or which you can which you can get on YouTube, which is actually not a bad thing. But I don't think it's going to be as artistic as it used to be. Yeah, or like yeah. I, I really I really doubt that that there's going to be any model who's going to whoop out whoop whoop out of that as like a. Here, here, <laughs> Uh, wig artistry like uh, let me tell you like I've done with this this dude I've done a photo shoot with what seven yeah. or eight wigs in four <laughs> fucking hours yeah like that was let lot. me tell you it gets intense but it's, it's amazing um, I, I, see, I like working like that because also if you give me a reference and you tell me the direction that we're going down it, it, especially if it's a wig story it makes a lot it makes it a lot easier if I if I kind of pre-do the wigs to, to uh, you know, as far as I can go without being on top of the model's head. So it makes it easier for me to do that. Then I can just literally just plug it on, plug it on, plug it on. So. <laughs> well, then I think like the, 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 the most natural question to ask, like for a uh, South London native little boy, what made yeah. you go for hair? Do you know what? I... I'm not sure if, if many people know this, but I wanted to be a hairdresser from the age of six. Wow. Because um, I, you know, I grew up with a, you know, a single mother of seven who would take us to the hairdressers, or take us to the barbers, drop us off, go to the hairdressers herself, and then we'd have to kind of wait in the barbers for her to finish, or go and sit in the hairdressers with her. Now, at the time, I used to hate it. <laughs> But on the flip side, I enjoyed it. I think I hate it because my brothers hate it. So I was doing what I thought I should be doing. But I've always enjoyed hair. Like I remember as a kid, I used to draw pictures of hair and stick it on the wall. Now, don't get it twisted. I can't draw. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't draw. So I used to draw pictures of hair. And I, I'm convinced I still draw exactly the same way I did 
when I was like six or seven than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess the execution is all that matters. But how did you go about it? Like I, w I would think, I would think it's like um, because I've I've done I've done uh, education in here as well, mm -hmm. and it was it was still like even even in my time, you know, in Finland, it was still like frowned upon, you know, like yeah, oh, like you're a gay man, gonna go mm -hmm. and like uh, um, you know, hair education. Obviously. Yeah. But I would I would even think that in London at the time. Even like, was it how? How did you go about it? You know, especially being um, one of seven from you know South London. Yeah. All that. Well, I mean, my brothers had a problem with me. I don't, I don't. I'm not sure they had a problem with me playing with Barbie, but I had Barbie at first. Um, so I used to play with Barbies, and then from there, I didn't actually start hairdressers until, until a lot later because. Very few people know this, but I also had pop group at first. Oh wow! I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I was in pop group first, and we were on our way to doing really well. But singing wasn't something I wanted to do. I grew up singing with my mum and my sister, so I grew up singing in the gospel choir. And then I went for auditions, and then I got into a pop group. Um, but it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It's something that I just felt natural doing. Um, so I didn't start hairdressing until I think I was. I think I was in a group for a year. So I think I was 18, yeah, because I had to take my age, my age back when I was in the group. So probably 18. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. but I, I, I started off in the salon first. Um, I started off in the salon first, sweeping the floor, doing all the basics that you do. And then I kind of moved, worked my way up and kind of got from there. Yeah, so sort of like the classic way, you know, like yeah. from like yeah. disciple into the master, so to speak. Which, yeah, is, but, which I think is the best way to... You need, you need, once you've got the foundation, I think it kind of it kind of helps you along the way because once you've got the foundation you know if there's a problem you kind of know how to fix it yeah you know so all my all my wigs i tend to color myself um because i can i am able to color hair so that's what works for me otherwise i would have to obviously make the wig which i do and then outsource for someone to do the color for me yeah so maybe having that but that kind of education behind me has actually helped me Make my wigs and color my wigs myself with you know instead of having to send them elsewhere to have them. Yeah, but like, how did the how did the wigs then uh, become part of your repertoire? Because I I know as as a former hairstylist, like you know mm -hmm. we we like for us wigs were like in Finland it was more like the a speciality like for theatre mm -hmm. and things like this like because obviously like the the um, the, the people in the need of a wig would only be in in you know scandinavian countries back in the time it was like more mm -hmm. about like if you had cancer or yeah but we, we didn't have like a lot of you know black culture now yeah. more so mm -hmm. great but back, in, mm -hmm. back then it was like uh i would have had to go and completely like re-educate myself on that how did you learn did somebody teach you or do you yourself taught or uh it's a whole concoction of <laughs> self-taught someone taught me and i went and done a call so my big sister who was all into her wigs and her hairstyles when I was younger. Um, so she taught me how to make a basic wig with, with glue and a wig cap. Um, that was years ago, which I've, I've still got a picture, which I found the other day. And then um, she, from there, I went on YouTube. And, you know, you, you, can, you can learn anything from YouTube. So I learned how to make, how to sew wigs from, you know, how to sew a wig onto a cap. Um, sorry, a... Uh, a weft onto a cap and from there because you know throughout my career i was working i've been working in film from like before i even knew before i even wanted to so i worked in the first film i worked on was called um world war z which i, I still haven't seen. i haven't seen it because i just fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> i still fall asleep so i haven't seen it um so it's from world war z so from there i really i got that's when i became interested in like you know, strand by strand, which is called knotting. Yeah. So that's when I, I kind of love that. And from there, I went to a course at Pinewood and then a, co a course of foundation. So you learn how to make the foundation and then put the hair onto it, which I vow never to do again. <laughs> because that is, that was intense. It was a whole week and it was, I mean, yes, I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed certain parts of it. And the certain parts I enjoyed was not what the course was about. It was other, it was other techniques of using 
using, I guess, both high street and high end. So now what I do is I combine the two. So I combine film parts of the wig, so parts of the wigs I do are with a film uh, front with a, I guess, a high end back. So you've got like a final lace at the front. Yeah, but that's, that's yeah. great. That's great because yeah. I think, I think a lot of people who uh, want to get in the industry, what I found mm -hmm. like the same thing with the hair education, some of the parts I, I was just like, I hate it, like doing perms. Like just even, just even <laughs> the, the smell of the, the perm liquid once you oh, I love it. it. I'm like, I, I love it. I would just run out and I would just skip it and I still don't even know how to do yeah, it. Yeah. I just refuse to uh, mm -hmm. do it. I was like, only old ladies have perms. But obviously it's not true. But like, no, was, not nowadays. It was a lot yeah. more about like the classic, you know, little rolls and so I, I, I wouldn't be, so it's, it's great for anybody who's listening to hear that mm -hmm. you can actually pick and choose. And now, now you yeah. know, we can specialize in pretty much everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, you don't, you don't, I don't think you, you don't need to restrict yourself. And just because you're going to do a course, cause what, I, what, how, what I got from the course, I mean, she's probably going to laugh at this, um, is that there was a wig on the side and it was, and it was actually a wig, a shop bought wig that they refronted, so they took the front off, because it's not a lace front, they took the front off and put a lace front on it. And this wasn't part of the course. So every day for the whole for the whole week, I kept on asking her bits and bobs about what she was doing with that. And that's what I learned, which is what I wanted, not what I went to the course to do. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's, yeah. so that's, I mean, it all depends on what you want from it, or where you want to go with it. Exactly. Well, um, have you, uh, do you have like, we can see a lot of wigs there. Do yeah. you have favorites and do you give them names? Uh, no, because there's, there's quite a few. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there's quite so a few. The, so the family is, is broad. Yeah, there's quite a few. Cause they, so on this, should I move the camera around? Yeah, or just like show, show some of okay, your like, so favorites of the moment. This is all short hairdos. Yeah. Um, this one here is probably my favorite one. This one's one I styled. This one is in process. This one, there's a label on it that says add more hair and recolor. Yeah. And these ones up here are my synthetic ones. Oh, and then you've got my hair extension rail. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've, been, I've been very accustomed to all of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see it. <laughs> yeah, because like, um, um, I wanted to go to uh, next towards like uh, self care. Obviously, there's a lot of. Um, a lot of a lot of ladies ladies and gents mm -hmm. in lockdown with mm -hmm. major hair disasters especially like for for afro hair like if you've had braids dark mm -hmm. weaves like more majority eve or extension across the yeah. board people have had mm -hmm. to take them off obviously yeah. unless yeah. you want to have like great matted sort of <laughs> thematic carpet like for you to uh guide you through out of yeah. out of uh, quarantine uh -huh. uh, what would be your your tips, especially for Afro hair? Like, obviously, my partner is black in yeah. Cuba, so I'm very accustomed to the difficulties opposite to the sort of Caucasian hair. Mm -hmm. What would you, would be your 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 best hair tips, actually, for people? You know, because I think this is a is a massive, massive uh, okay. right now. So, are we going for for every race, basically? Yeah, but I mean, it's like okay. it's, I would say, like. If I would, I would rather even want to focus on Afro hair because I think okay. that's always kind of like, you know, we all know how to comb and brush this type of. Hair, but, you'd be surprised who doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would, I would rather give the floor. Like we don't have like that much time. We only have like an hour, so I would rather okay. focus on. Okay, sort of like sure. Afro hair. Sure. I'm sure that everything ties into, uh, uh, new, like giving nutrition and especially uh, mm -hmm. moisture. Mm -hmm. Um. <sighs> So say, because I, I saw a friend the other day who normally has uh, hair extensions and weaves and whatnot. And the other day, not for the first time, but for a while, I looked at her and I thought, Do you know what, you actually look free. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with with, with weaves and whatnot. I mean, because it, it changes the look. I get it, I completely get it. But it, right now, everyone's going through a phase of, okay, well, we can't get to your hairdresser. So I, what I would say is 
try and maintain or learn, use this time to learn to maintain your own hair without adding more hair to it. Because yes, once we once lockdown lockdown lifts, we can go back to you know how we used to be. But at this moment, because not many people know how to look after their hair, and so and not many people know how to braid. Which I I didn't know how to braid until like how many years ago? Because I didn't go to when it comes to braiding, it's not something you're taught in your bog standard college. You have to go to an advanced course, which I disagree with, to learn how to braid. So I, so not many people know how to braid unless your parents taught you how to do it, which I think my mum did, I can't remember, or I just didn't listen. Anyways, um, so you can't, I mean, not many people know how to braid. So I say, use this time to learn techniques and learn how to braid. And learn how to style your hair, even if it's not braiding. Learn how to look, maintain your hair by just doing research and good and knowing what your hair wants and, and what your hair doesn't want. And there's this, you know, there's a hairstylist, um, Stefan, who, uh, you know, who, who is really good, who, you know, was edu he's actually educating people on what not to use. And, you know, everyone gets this a whole, everyone has this whole misconception conception of, oils are good for the hair not oils are all good for the hair because sometimes they weigh the hair down and it doesn't actually penetrate the hair so it's you know there's i think now's the time to learn what your hair doesn't doesn't need yeah and and, yeah. and, and definitely on the, on the sense that not everybody's hair is the same even though you exactly like from the same family you have the same mm -hmm. but it still doesn't mean that well yeah. obviously like the last person who's touched this mane was yes. the mr kieran levine and I so, it's like, he's still the one, one who cut my hair and still looks okay I like I like your hair long though. Yeah, and I'm gonna yeah. grow now. That's what I mean. I like, didn't have to face my my curly hair. Yeah, but you've got but, nice you got nice curls as well. Yeah, but like, but it was so funny. But because I realized this when you told me, like, there was like, oh, this I didn't realize that you have hair because you always wear a cap. Yeah, which I do, but mine's for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I was just like, and I, I it, it actually stuck with me, and I was like, why yeah. do I always do that? For me, mm -hmm. it's always like because I've always had really, really curly hair. So especially when it gets bigger, I call I've always called it the poodle's ass. That's that's, yes. that's, that's my definition for it. And today uh -huh. it took took some time to get it to the yeah. point. It's not as, as effortless as it looks. So, mm -hmm. but I kind of like learned to go back because I used to embrace it a lot. And some something happened throughout the years. I don't know why. I don't know what is the taboo around curly hair or big hair mm -hmm. in general, especially mm -hmm. for men. And even for women, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you hope people not to go back so full on to like all of the sort of like... Switch it up a bit. Use your natural hair, work with what you've got. And if you want to change, because, you know, like I'm, like, I'm not sure if anyone has seen that. Like, when I put on wigs, I do a lot of like comical wig videos, as you've seen. Yes. And it kind of gives you a persona. So each wig you put on, it gives you like a persona. So I guess it's the same thing with like hairstyles. It gives you this confidence that you obviously can't get, but you know, just playing around with hairstyles and playing around with wigs. I think it's, it's nice. Yeah. And I think, yeah. like, I think the biggest like uh, misconception, what I always like to uh, bring forth as a professional to like, to the general public is that, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, you, you look at all of these like beautiful actresses and music artists and I was like, oh my God, I love the hair. I love this. They're all wearing a wig. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm... Long, it's, it's a wig. They did not all yeah. of a sudden just like grow 12 inches of hair and then go in a, on a different color pop, even though they don't like to tell it. So, you know, fear. No, um, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I would, I would think it's like a good thing. It's like for for great hair, like invest mm -hmm. in great wig, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah, that it is custom to you rather mm -hmm. than going back and forth like bleaching, then going dark. Unless you know, like it depends. I'm a person that I, I've, I've had tracks done in in my modeling days, and oh, I really? hated it. <laughs> I hated yeah. it. Like, yeah. I, I can't even sleep with a with the sleep mask on. So imagine something. I couldn't do that either. That's so, why I can't wear a mask. <laughs> I can't wear this whole mask and do it. No, it doesn't appeal to me. I can't do it. Um, go what on. are you? What are your thoughts then from from the sort of like hair care to home haircuts? Mm -hmm. Wives cutting, <laughs> wives cutting their hair. You cutting your own hair. Seeing all of the interesting like. Um, guidelines like put, put a pot on your head and cut your fringe what are, what is your there's a lot of those I mean, so, does, like, anyone, does, does anyone still do that though like yeah. the whole bowl thing and and yeah. people still, because we've come so far where there's so much stuff to see and and also like what i don't understand is everyone's 
everyone has a hairdresser. Like, it's impossible if you don't have a hairdresser. Everyone has a hairstylist that they go to for cuts and colors and whatnot. So if you're going to do something, consult whoever you go to. Don't just buy off the shelf or just, or just assume that you know what to do. It makes no sense. Like, what, what I've noticed, actually, I've, I've, I tell all my friends is, is that, you know, heterosexual guys are shaving their hair. Gay guys are bleaching their hair. <laughs> That's yeah. that. <laughs> it's like what is happening so why i mean i'm like yo calm down it's not been that long it's not like armageddon where the end where the world's coming to an end you don't need to go that far this year it's only been what six weeks so just, just chill out yeah it's, it's not and like, you're, not going, it's, you're it's only going to be at home anyhow yeah it's not like tom hanks washed away talking about <laughs> exactly. we're, not, we're, we're not there yet and i think for me I've, I've wanted to, like, I've always, like, for a couple of years, I wanted to grow my hair out. Like, I've always had yeah. really short hair. Yeah. But the reason why I haven't done so is that because I've never, like, withstand the horrible middle period that you look like, mm-hmm. like a ball. Yeah. So I think mm. I, I, I've, 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 I've taken this as a, as a massive opportunity. It's like, okay, I have nowhere to go. Like, mm-hmm. I do not need to, you know, look like the Queen of Sheba when I go to Astrid to buy my groceries once a week. You know? <laughs> Let the yeah. hair grow and then hmm. see, because I'm I'm sure like when this is lifted, I'm going to like here and fix me up, but I don't want to go back to short. I don't think you should. I really, I like your hair because when I saw your hair the other day, I, um, I think you posted a picture. I really like it. I think you should go for it. I think it should work with what you've got. Yeah. As, as soon yeah. as I get, get through the Blanche Devereaux from Golden Girls look. See, like, that, <laughs> so this, is, this is the time that you can wear hats in between the face. This is where you should wear hats because no one's going to see it. So when you when you're ready to kind of wear it out, that's when you take the hat off. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not yeah. gonna be one of one of those. Like, and then I'm sure that the first hair trend after lockdown is like long luscious locks, and everybody's cut their hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna. Wear it. I think I'm looking forward to seeing what you know what's happening. But I also think that because we had this whole whole hairstyle, especially for women who use the color of their hair of rooted, you know, having a bit of roots out now. So I'm intrigued to see what it is now because a lot of people have grown up their roots. Also, what I've noticed is that a lot of, a lot of blondes are colouring their hair pastel colours, like home colours. I'm like, okay, I mean, it looks good. It looks good. So I'm intrigued to see what we come out with. Yeah, but it's, I, I think it's like, because there's still some sort of uh, element to like for, for people who work in offices. Like I, I think I think the sort of like my little pony look is not like the one. <laughs> for every single profession, you know. So it's gonna be interesting. Plus, a lot of people yeah. don't know if you have like bleached uh, blonde bases or you're, you're blonde and you put any type of pastel color. I know what you're saying, might, yeah. It might not even come off. It's, good, it's, gonna, it's gonna make the recovery a lot, or the repair a lot harder, especially if you're coloring it so severe. Whereas if it's not a pastel, it's like a, an intense color. It's gonna be interesting because you've, you've stained your hair. And the only way to get rid of that is to kind of well, use an intense kind of remover. But I know I do. I'm not sure if everyone's using like harsh colors. I, knew, I do know that um, bleached uh, the um, bleached London have a color that lasts like what is wash and wash out. So I'm not sure what people are using just yet. Yeah, but I mean, it's like we used to like when we we're kids use like silk paper to color our hair, and it would take mm-hmm. first, silk paper. You would rub with water and the the dye out of the paper. But this is like you know in the nineties. <laughs> and it would not come off like no way. I've never heard that before. I'm gonna Google that. Yeah, but you can do yeah, it, I'm gonna Google that. You do it for weight suit. So you can you can actually dye sections by just with, with silk paper that have like a color and you can rub it when you wet it and you rub it on blonde base and it will transfer. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> Interesting. I don't like that. Yeah. So yeah. but how has your how is your days now? starting to look like what is the new normal of Kieran Levine since you've so got the, on set so what do you, um, how do you how do you how do you spend your time now uh okay so since lockdown has happened I can't see when we were going before we were going into lockdown in my head I thought to myself right this is gonna be the perfect time for me to do what I need to do to all of these because some wigs need like uh comb some wig needs more hair hair extensions um so I had all these things in my head that I'm going to do, or I'm going to make some wigs. As soon as lockdown hit, I literally went on the sofa and have done that the whole time. I've, <laughs> it's, I have, I mean, normally, because I, 
I'm not a I'm a workaholic, um, as you are, and I was saying to my partner the other day that if we were paid a hundred pounds just because for every hour that we slept or every hour per day, if we sleep eight hours, that's eight hundred pounds. So I don't actually like to sleep because it's like eight hundred pounds worth of like an earning. Anyways, so I was gonna I was gonna make wigs. But there's no hair shops open so and i don't buy like i said to you i don't buy hair online because i've done it once where a company sold me this hair this wig as human hair and it was plastic it wasn't even like like a fiber where where i can manipulate with the tongs it was a fiber that melted so i can't i don't order stuff online i don't order clothes um hair or use my calendar my phone i use a manual calendar because i'm old school but i don't I, so I, I can't actually buy any hair so i'm not actually made any wigs i've only styled one wig which is over there somewhere um for the whole time so the, so the ladies are in lockdown as well apparently yeah basically yeah <laughs> yeah so so uh so so your your days is like sofa food netflix sleep yeah now when um my pt's gonna laugh at this i'm gonna show you it um I, he, you know, he gave me this whole thing of, you know, workouts that I can do at home, you know, because I was having PT sessions before we went into lockdown. Uh, so he gave me this whole, you know, routine every day. I done one day, that was good. Done two day, that was good. And then I said to myself, wait a minute, how am I doing this when the reason why I got personal training in the first place is because I have no motivation to do it myself. <laughs> and as soon as I said that to myself, I just stopped. <laughs> I've only worked out twice. Have you have you developed any type of like hidden skills during the lockdown? Because you know, like all the gays, me included, like you know, I've gone gone to baking. Like I'm making like eggless, gluten free, you know, chocolate chip peanut butter cookies and all of this mm -hmm. this sort of stuff. Uh, have have any any of these type of things manifested or something that is very out of character for you? Uh, no, because one, I don't I don't go in the kitchen. I don't cook. Uh, I I think I've cooked once in the space of six weeks. Um, no, no, not really. Um, what I have noticed actually during lockdown is that my partner doesn't close cupboard doors. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned I've learned that, and that's about it. Uh, fair enough. Like, yeah, because for, for me, this has been what I was actually talking with a friend from New York who was like, uh -huh. and I'm so hungover. And I was like, do you know what I've learned throughout this lockdown? Like, because I always mm -hmm. thought that I'm a person who has a very addictive personality. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because I used to smoke heavily and, you know, like I had this sort of weird, like I, I like when I get used to things. Like on certain mm -hmm. days I go out and on this day I do this. And yeah. like I, I used to tell myself that I'm like this and it's completely BS. I, mm -hmm. I haven't drank a single glass of alcohol in all of this time. No, I right, but um, I stopped smoking. Mm, you know, like all of this sort of stuff. I stopped today. Yeah. And then I yeah. realized that for me, it was always in the head. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I was like panicking about that sort of stuff. So it's quite, quite weird because then some of my friends that didn't used to drink so much mm -hmm. are drinking heavily now. Yeah. So, so in, in that sort of a mental health, health aspect this i think mm -hmm. this has been a very interesting time because a lot mm -hmm. of people who have and are suffering from addiction is actually mm -hmm. like throw them out of that closet so to speak. yeah i mean i i met i'm I, I i i met a friend well not met a friend i spoke to a friend on on zoom the other day and we were talking and barely my i've known for five years all of a sudden she started smoking i'm like i've never not once seen you smoke whether we've been drinking or what you know whatever i've never seen you smoke so you so seeing her smoke now is just weird so it's just it's <coughs> i think because people are going two ways they've either realized okay well i actually don't like doing this or oh i'm gonna try this because i've never done it before because i don't have to work so it's going it's going it's going both ways and like and also like i used like you said because a lot of people who have addiction I guess what kind of stops them or what slows them down, this is what I think. I don't think, I don't know if it's true or not. What slows them down is that they have to go to work. So they can't do whatever yeah. kind of 
whatever drug or drink they take on a regular basis to fulfill, fulfill that addiction. So they, because they're not working, it's 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 kind of keep it's 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 sped up or it's increased more so. Yeah. So I I feel bad. I feel bad for anyone going through that at the moment. Yeah, and it's, and and, yeah. And, and I mean it's like I think like I'm I'm like that sort of weird like optimistic always. Mm -hmm. I I think that every every, every sort sort of like bad thing has something good about it because now at least this this topic has been discussed because we all mm -hmm. we all face at at some point of our lives we were going to go through hard times and I think it's okay to talk about it and shed some light on that because mm -hmm. there's going to be um just even though that the virus has like whacked the humanity left right and mm -hmm. center, but it's it's quite alarming how much that the lockdown has affected people's mental health and mm -hmm. I think that's going to be for for me personally I I consider that the second wave of the virus in a different format because sure. because a lot of people when even when you are allowed to go back to work are mm -hmm. going to be you know equipped to go back to work that's the goal. Yeah. Um if we if we reflect on everything so far where you have done professionally is there is there a specific moment for you when you said to yourself like fuck I made it or like that this is like this is like what why I started doing this for or is do you think it's still ahead of you yes i'm i'm really i'm really hard on myself um and the way i see it is that once i start thinking like that i'm going to become complacent yeah i'm the same. um I mean, yeah i'm going to become so i can't no matter what i've done or where i've been or or, or who i've worked with i i won't allow myself to become that, that person's thing. Okay, well, I, I've got here, I've done this, I've done that person, so I've made it. I, I won't allow that to happen, so no, not yet. And to, to be honest, I, I, I annoy myself because at what point will I say, okay, well, I've done this, you know, this is amazing. I don't, I've never had that moment. And even when I when I do a hairstyle or make a wig, or someone said, oh my God, it's amazing, it's amazing. If you if you notice how I am, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But I would never, I would never like big up myself in a way that I think, okay, right, yeah, I did this. This is amazing. Yes, I think it's good, but I could always do better. Yeah. And that's that's just who I am. That's how I work. That's how I motivate myself to do more as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same as well. Like, mm. I'm, I'm, I feel like I've always just like a sort of overachiever and do this. Like, yeah. I, I know maybe that's why we work so good together because we're all... Yeah. Like, but, but what this time has taught me is... Is kind of like it's okay, do you know? Like, what's the point of like rushing through because we're not enjoying anything what we do? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. Like, I feel yeah. like why why am I allowed to be proud of that? Or if I said like, oh, I did well, somebody's gonna look at me like, oh, I'm self self uh, mm -hmm. absorbed or whatever. And I was like, fuck that. Uh, because to be honest, like, um, I I think I'm never gonna be content. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay. Honest, like, I don't care. I don't it's care. Okay. All of a sudden, get like Grammys, Oscars, whatever, for whatever reason. My name is. Uh -huh. But I'm still like, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay, man. And that's I think I think I'm not sure yet because I'm still kind of going through that in my own head. Like, is is that is that ever gonna change, or is that normal, or is it? Is it is it is it what keeps you kind of kind of working harder, harder, striving for better? I don't so know. I, 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 I think for me, it will probably change when, like, I, I speak of, speak about this a lot with my partners. Like, uh -huh. to get to the point that you don't have to count every single goddamn penny. When you walk to a supermarket, it's like, yeah, I want to buy that, and you know, it's gonna, it's not going to destroy your your economy or oh, sort of things yeah. like when it starts flowing the sort of way that you don't have to. Uh, actively seek for the next job that mm -hmm. like, that you can know that ah oh, okay I'm like booked for the next six months I think yeah. maybe that for me the I get that security is going to be yeah. for me the thing because I've met like a lot of amazing uh, people mm -hmm. uh, party party worked with celebrities and so on and they're all the same mm -hmm. we are all the same at the end. yeah well, I think I think I think that's what kind of makes us who we are as in individuals. Um, it, and it, I think, but also I think I also think that's the create that, that's the creativity in all of us, and that's what makes us different from each other. Is because we all have we all have different goals, we have different like drives, and, and that's what keeps us going, I guess. Yeah, and yeah, and I would like to highlight, like especially because 
uh, I've been I've been personally waiting for the the hair story that we did together is out today. So um, and, yeah, and, and and the thing what I uh, I actually spoke spoken with my partner because we have a beautiful uh, Emman Deng um, Sudanese uh, model, yeah. and the whole thing is about Afro texture, which I'm so it's, it's never been celebrated, or if it's been celebrated, no. been celebrated on a white person. That it doesn't yeah. belong to. So <laughs> for everybody like say like that's that personally to me is, mm -hmm. is something that I I am going to celebrate because to be on that sort of wave and mm -hmm. push that to be acceptable and normal because there's so many ladies uh, and gents out there that feel that they are not represented. And for yeah. me, for me maybe that's the the sort of where my work is now uh, evolving. Is mm -hmm. continue doing the creative work and the fabulous and the the light and fun, but just kind of insert that is for everyone, and it's, mm -hmm. it is it doesn't come in one format. Yeah, I, I remember when we were when we were choosing the model, it, I, we, you and I were like, we need, we need, we need this person, and as soon as we got, as soon as we kind of we, book, we booked her, I sent you a message saying we've got her, and I was, <laughs> I was so yeah. I was so excited because I I think I think she I think. The look and the, the whole shoot, I think is I think is I'm going to say this now, but I think it's one of my best. Yeah, same, same. yeah, I can say that. And and yeah. and uh, and the thing is like because uh, how how me and Kieran how we work is like how we we bounce out of each other. Mm -hmm. And on mm -hmm. the day when I started seeing the, the wigs, and yeah. I was like, wait a minute, like we're doing decades, but okay, but these remind me of all of these amazing, yeah, 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 black iconic. Characters yeah, and women, and the name that we came up with. <laughs> so, there, so, so there's going to be Dion from Clueless. We yeah, have, we have a little bit of Rihanna meets um, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith in Mage. Whitney. There's Whitney. There's Whitney. There's Whitney. There's there's a lot of lot of these. So for for all of all of you black ladies and gents, you know, <laughs> we represented. For I think I, I think I think how many? I think there's eight. Eight or nine? I can't remember. I know there's I, a I lot. Don't, I don't know. I haven't seen the final selection. I know there's. I know there's a lot. I think I've, yeah, I've dismantled them actually because I thought they were in here somewhere. Yeah. I know but, there's, uh, yeah there's... We are uh, fast. Like we only have fifteen minutes left. So now is okay. going to be the question part from cool. our viewers to cool. you. Let's have okay. a look on the first one. Um, so uh, we have. Um, a person asked him, Kieran, could you please model some of the wigs for us? <laughs> pick one, pick one. We don't have time for for the whole. Pick one. We can do it like we visit it with with only one. Okay, so no. one second. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Now that is a lot of hair. Yeah. So, She's good. So on an average, how long how long does it take for you to like create something like that, for example? Um, it depends on it depends on how long I want it to. So if it's if it's a if it's for someone, um, then it takes me a lot longer. But if it's for a shoot, not long because I would halve it. Yeah, yeah, of course, because you can take a picture. Yeah. But yeah, like, the, the thing is, like, uh, with your wigs, like, I, I think you're still, of all of the people that I worked, like, you're in top three, hands down, the best. Uh -huh. Just because, uh -huh. like, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of, like, uh, people work with wigs and mm -hmm. all that, but it looks so fake. Like, that's, well, that's... I, I like things that look real, even though yeah. they can be absurd and, uh, so, and whatnot, so. Um, but also, I think, I think that's from when I've done a bit of film, so I've seen how they make, how they wrap their hair, because foundation is key. So once you learn to wrap their hair, it makes it everything a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, the next question is, what would mm -hmm. be uh, your uh, best advice for someone who is looking in, t uh, in a career in fashion? Or fashion oh. and hair, sorry. Fashion and what's that again? No, like in hair. So like, yeah. for someone um, who's looking in to become, what would be your, like, in a nutshell, like, the best best advice for someone who wants to become like you? Don't run before you can walk. Yeah. Um, 
and I say that because I, yes, I was a sis because I used to. I obviously worked in a salon, and I worked my way up to stylist, and then became a manager of I think two or three salons before I became a session stylist. And when I when I did jump from salon stylist to session stylist, no one told me that when you're before when you're first starting out, you still need to have an income. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally left the salon with no form of income, thinking that money is going to come from somewhere. But when it comes to when it comes to the industry, you have to do a lot of freebies first to build up your portfolio and to still learn from other people and learn, you know, different skills. So I said, don't run before you can walk. And listen to what people tell you. Because like, no one can say something. That is difficult, especially when you're young. Like, <laughs> exactly. I was mean, yeah, saying here, same here. I, know it, I knew it all. But I would, I mean, I've still got, you know, one of my good friends who I've known since she was really young. And I see, I've done it because she was assistant in the salon that I used to manage, that I used to manage. And me, she's 25 now, oops, sorry, she's 25 now. So me trying to tell her what to do is not happening. Yeah, no. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been there too many times. But I mean, it's like, I've, I say to everybody like this, that, that uh, in order to be successful, you need mm -hmm. to be resilient. And I, mm -hmm. for me to get to where I'm now and how I've managed to hone my skills is because of failure as well. Because if it would have been too easy, my work would be shit, mm -hmm. just yeah. for the record. But it, there, there has to be some sort of like, I, like there's a great saying that a uh, great artist never creates nothing spectacular un unless they've known danger. You have, okay. to be, you have to feel a bit of like on the edge. It's like, oh, I need to hustle, get this, uh, uh show on the road what is going yeah. to be the first thing you're going to do after the lockdown is lifted work related or any, just anything no what is the first thing that you're dying to do okay don't judge <laughs> but go to mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> but i think they're starting like the mcdonald's they're starting their home delivery yeah, KFC just opened the other day, so this day opened and I got some food from there. Um, no, all jokes aside, um, I think, do you know what? I want I want to go for a long walk. And when I say long walk, no, actually, scrap that. I want to get in the tube. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've not been in the tube for since, I've not been in the tube for, since lockdown started. I haven't, like, I've, I haven't even been to the tube since probably now for like, three months because really? even when when uh when we work together like uh mm -hmm. i we just i came there by bus so i haven't yeah, been to the tube for like good three months yeah i've, I've not been in tube for a fair, for a fair while and a lot of times like i i get inspired by things i see and if i'm not seeing the thing i'm not being inspired yes i can go on magazines you know better magazines all over the place but i get inspired by people i get inspired by pictures i get inspired by shapes I get inspired by colors, and if I'm not seeing them, then I'm, I'm not really inspired by anything at the moment. Yeah. So that's why that's one of the reasons why I say get in the tube. Yeah, yeah, because you see a lot of lot of inspiration yes. in the tube. Yeah, you do. Tell you. <laughs> Sometimes I see a bad hairdo, and I realize that okay, well, this is bad, but I flip this and change this and maneuver that and color that. I think it could be really good. So that's what that's the way I think. Yeah, because like my my favorite thing, especially in the tube, is look at look at people's like like uh way overdue wigs that are literally yeah. like matted like i think the best one was like this this really really sweet like sales assistant girl in uh, um one of these type of like high street stores and i was there mm -hmm. with uh with my my partner and uh his mother visiting from okay. uh, grand canary who's cuba uh -huh. and and it's like has beautiful hair like and would refuse to wear a wig like as a okay. partner, she was just wouldn't wear a wig. She was like, yeah. I'm not gonna wear a wig. And we saw this like sweet like girl with this I I think it was a quarter of the wig left and there was like a little <laughs> thing ponytail that was just like matted like a cut oh. like that. And, and we were just looking at like, how did you even allow to come with mm -hmm. like would, the manager was like, Your own hair is <laughs> yeah. better than that. It was like yeah. that sort of thing, it wasn't, it wasn't even shaking going. Uh -huh. right. Shaking down. <laughs> my partner i mean he says i've kind of created a monster within him because now because sometimes when i'm if i'm talking to you yes i'm talking to you but i'm not looking at your face i'm looking at your hair yeah and he does exactly the same thing so he talks to people's hair and sometimes you know because you know my partner's white 
sometimes when he's looking at someone, he's talking to someone, and they're, you know, Caribbean or, or whatever, and they've got a weave on, he sits there and he looks at their weave, and I think, then he gets really insecure because, you know, there's this white man looking at this black woman's weave. <laughs> it makes him feel really uncomfortable. But yeah, it's funny. But yeah, yeah but it, that's true. It, it comes with the craft because I, I've, I've been told, like, uh -huh. been since forever, that I scan people because mm -hmm. I look at the clothes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm scanning them. Just because like, no. I'm a person with many, you know, like with the background being a model and a dancer. Uh -huh. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they think that I'm one of those like assholes that's going to like, oh, you fat. Why Are you not? <laughs> what is funny is this crap that you're wearing. When I'm just you know, like a little child, you know, like a sponge, yeah. like looking like, oh, that's very clever. Uh -huh. um, okay, before we, we still have about eight minutes left. Okay. Hopefully. We're going to be cut off by Instagram soon. Like, they, they have a new timer, like two minute time sure. when that comes, okay. and we'll have to be like. So, we're going to go, yeah, go. Go, gonna go to the notorious quick fire question round that I've prepared. Okay. So, you can, you know, the way that you answer to this is e either one or the other, or something. There's no rules in this game. Okay, cool. Sure. So, uh, let's get it started. So, blonde or br brunette? Oh, you said there's another. No, it's just blonde. Like, you, you, you. blonde. <laughs> uh, McDonald's or KFC? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, KFC. Uh, tea or coffee? Neither. <laughs> uh, green or yellow? I can't wear yellow green. <laughs> <laughs> uh, curly or straight? Ooh. Mm, uh, textured. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, blunt or razor cut? Oh, oh both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brandy or Monica? I thought it was a drink for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'm going to say neither. Don't judge. <laughs> uh, sneakers or boots? Mm, boots. Normal or dry shampoo? For someone with no hair? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> okay, no. Um, both, both. Uh, uh, editorial shoot or a breast, uh, press junket? <laughs> uh, both. Oh, shit. Both. Uh, <laughs> Satin or sequins? Satin makes me sweat. <laughs> sequins! <laughs> heels or wedges? Heels. And not kitten heels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, horror or drama? Horror all the way. Club or quiet night in? Quiet night in with an Indian. Uh, Takeaway. <laughs> Licorice or toffee? Neither. I hate both of them too. Soy or normal milk? Soy. Or rice milk. Sweet or savory? Savory. Bubbles or a stiff one? Say what? Bubbles or a stiff one? <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles initially. <laughs> That, that concludes my, my speed round. Uh, <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. Thank you, everybody who joined. Uh, I've, I've put like um, a pinned um, the website to uh, Kieran's work uh, by Nylon Artist, who is both of our agents at the moment. So stay tuned. We're not going to go anywhere. We're yeah. still, still going to come here and create amazing, amazing things. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, we've, we've officially gone now to one uh, minute and 50 seconds before we're cut yeah. off. Is there okay. any, any quick shout outs you uh, want to give to everybody locked in quarantine and give like a super quick advice how to deal with your hair issues? Um, quick shout out to my agents. So Michelle and also obviously Kelly as well. Um, and just quick shout out to everyone who's listened to what we should be doing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And if you missed this episode, you can still watch it 24 hours. 
Yeah. And it's gonna it's gonna be saved and it's gonna come to you in YouTube and Instagram TV later. So you have not missed nothing. So we have we've been um saved for the eternity in the matrix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much for being my guest, Kieran. No, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, talk to you soon and have everybody have a great evening. Cool. Love you loads. Ciao. Bye. Ow.